Right, today I'm going to use alcohol inks on a jelly plate, a gel plate. This is a gel press. It's a 5x7, I think it's the size of it. Um, this is rather interesting because um, you can include, you can use things like uh, acrylic paint as well. And it, it just gives an interesting effect, um, I've found. So it's... Uh, I'll show you a couple that uh, probably you might like to see. It can be very, very subtle. Um, if you have a look here, this is uh, alcohol ink and also white acrylic paint, I think, on that one. And then you can get some really interesting things happening. See this one here? It's blue and bronze, I think, is the colour I use. And then you can get some very abstract things happening, too, like this. Which is rather beautiful. So the paper I'm using is, it's from Office Works and it's called silk paper it's very very smooth and uh, it's got a good weight about 160 gsm or 170 and i have come to really like that paper it's for laser printers usually um and yeah i find it works very very well on the jelly plate you get a, a lot of definition with it. The other thing I'll be using are some homemade foam stamps or plates. And I do have some uh, stencils here or masks, various ones. This is a bought one, which I use a lot. I really love that one. This is a hand cut one that I've made at home. And this is another bought one. A little one which I really love. I wish they made that bigger. But they don't. So anyway, uh, I think we'll make a start. Now you also need a um, brayer. I use one brayer for the ink. And then I use another one for the paint. Always keep this one for the ink. You will need um, some sort of a palette knife, some sort of paper that you can roll your excess paint or ink or anything onto. I use an old phone book. This is a micro brush. And of course, you'll need alcohol inks. So again, uh, use a, a limited palette is probably the best thing to do. So I'll just put on some, uh, this is Storm Blue. You don't need that much. And you don't need to use the um, alcohol for this at this stage. And then this is just the uh, rust colour. So if you limit your palette, um, you'll get a better result. And what I do is I just brayer it on very lightly. It's almost feather touch. Okay. And then uh, what you can do... You can lay down your stencil, whichever one you want. Uh, so what if I use the one that I made myself? Okay. That one. And then, once that's down, just give it a roll, light roll over to make sure it sticks. And then what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to dry it. So I just, I seem to have lost my little fan. I usually use a lovely little fan that I 
Well, it's from Indonesia, I think. That's a little um, sandalwood fan. And I can't seem to find it at the moment. But this will do. This will dry it. Don't use your heat tools on the gel plate. You will be very, very sorry if you do that. Now, what you can do is you can either leave this here and put some more colour in or you can take that off. I might take it off first and you can see the image on the actual plate. And providing it's dry, you want it to be dry. Then we're going to do the plan B thing of using a thicker paint. I would like a heavy body paint. Uh, this is called Global acrylic and it's shark grey it's a color that I really really like it's very very light grey or you could use Matisse titanium white or a mixture of the two now with this part it's really really important that you don't use too much like uh, you only need a very small amount because otherwise you won't pull the image off the plate very small amount and often it's a, a good idea to um, roll your paint out on a, on a separate area and then put it on but this again they're the light light touch until you can start to see the image through the paint now I don't know if you can see that but I can so you get rid of that off from there. Now the next thing that you can do, because that's another layer, is to use one of these stamps to uh, get an image on there as well. So that's going to lift some of that, if you can see that. And then we'll t pull the print from that. Now here's a, this is a very simple registration by the way. Now I'll put it onto one sheet of paper but the best thing about this size of jelly clay is that you can get two prints on the one sheet of paper. Let's just see what happens with it. Whether it works or not. Yes it has. Just make sure you get all the bits and pieces off. And you'll see that it's it's quite subtle, but it's really the colours come up beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. So I'll do it again and we'll just do it slightly differently this time. Okay, so what I'll do this time, I'll put the same. Wait a minute. We'll put some colour on first. What if I do a different colour this time? This is still the storm blue. And you can see when you pull the print, it takes everything off the plate. And I might use storm blue and what about this lettuce green? And let's see what that does. Right, so this is the roller I need to use. Very lightly. I don't want to take it all off. I need to put a different stencil on this time. This one. This is a favourite of mine, this one. Beautiful. Right, so you lay that down. And then what, because that's open like that, there's an opportunity to uh, put something else in there. And where's that other little stencil gone? Oh, what have I done with it? It fell on the floor. There we go. So 
So you can do this and you want to push, push it down. Like that. And then you can come back and you could put another colour in there, I suppose, if you wanted to. This is called Sangria. It's quite a, a dark colour. So you can decide where you want to place it. Doesn't have to go everywhere. Um, the jelly plate is stained because I've used yellow. Uh, yellow always stains plates, which is, I don't mind it. I mean, it doesn't alter the way the plate behaves, so it doesn't worry me. And there's a bit more of that blue, storm blue. Now the aim now is to dry this again. And if I had my fan, it might happen a bit faster. Right. So I'll use the board again. It needs to be dry before you pull the uh, the mask or stencil up. This time I might use white instead of uh, grey to lift it. Now let's see what happens if it's dry enough. Usually uh, you can tell if it's dry when it's not. If you see it rolling around when you try and lift the stencil up, it means it's not dry. Now it won't be exact, um, but at the same time you can use um, that micro tool to draw in through it with a little bit of alcohol if you want. But I, I prefer to just let it do it, its thing. So we'll pull this up. Right, so you will make need to make sure that that is now on there is dry. So give it another furl. So what I'm talking about with the micro brush is, just grab that, for example. Say you wanted to um, take a little bit out, you just put a bit of alcohol on the brush. Now depending on how much alcohol is on that little brush, will depend on how big these dots are. Okay, so if you've got too much, they will take out the whole area. So I just um, blotted off a bit onto my apron so that it doesn't get too big. I mean, you can draw lines if you want. Uh, it's up to you what you do. So I'll just do a bit of that. Just to give a bit of variety, really. Okay. So. Then you pull this one up. As it's all dry. And you can keep going, you can keep going and then layer more acrylic paint over the top if you want to. Um, you can do all sorts of things with it. Now, providing it's dry, we can do our plan B. It's got to be dry though. Right. And remember, only a small amount. And this time what I'll do, I'll roll it on here first. Because this is uh, has very low viscosity. This paint is very, very thick. 
but that's good too. Nothing wrong with that. So. You want to make sure that you don't have too much paint on your roller. It's really important that you have just the right amount. You can always take some off as well, but just roll lightly. And once you start to see the image through there, which I think you can, you're starting to see it. Yep, so that's about the right amount. And as I said before, you can use this paper and get two prints from it. And often what will happen is you'll get a ghost print as well. So let's do it this way. It's just so lovely the way it pulls the whole lot off. So can you see that? Okay. Now let's do one more and um, put it on the other side of that. Uh, what if I use this sanguine, sangria, sorry, and uh, a pink maybe. See what happens if you use those together. Right. And then roll it a little bit. Now if you use the white paint to pull this, it's going to go very pink. But that's alright. Doesn't mean that it's wrong or anything. And we'll use this stencil again, maybe differently, and then I might use uh, this over the top. You can use all sorts of things to do this anyway, it's not as though, you know, you have to follow what I say. Right, and then what I think I'll do is I'll put another colour in here. Uh, another kind of pink maybe um, or I could go green I suppose why not let's do green and the way to do this and get it to work is to actually roller it on a little bit so it goes through the holes there and then, of course, you need to dry it. Again, drying. And uh, I'll use the grey again to, to pull the print when, when eventually we get there. Right, let's see, that might be all right. Yeah, that's okay. Now, then I'll show you something else that we can do with the grey. Instead of taking the stencil off this time, I'll uh, we'll put the paint. through the stencil as well and then we can do a stamp on it you can see you can just layer and layer and layer with this it's marvellous really like it okay now you can either stamp with that with that still on there you still need to be able to see that what we did with the ink through the 
the grey. Right. And then we might do the stamp through there as well. So what if we do? Let's see what happens. Right. Yep, yeah, that worked. So now you can take the print with that on it if you want to. Or, um, yeah, and I might do that actually because you can then take the stencil part off and get another print. So what we'll do is we'll do this. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, that's quite nice. That's fine. See that? The print over the top of that. It's not as exactly beautiful. So then you can pull this up. Right. And then maybe use the white again to pull this print which can be stamped into before you pull you actually pull the print to make it more interesting Remember, you need to be able to see through it, right? And then we'll put a stamp over the top, I think. We'll do it from the bottom up this time. Yeah. And then I have this little one here. See this? And if we put that on here. I'll put the materials list at the bottom of the video for you. Now, look, this is only the beginning of this. I mean, you can use so many different things to do this kind of printing. Such a great way of uh, filling in a day. Right, so you can see how much it sticks to the and takes off the plate. Oh, this one's rather lovely. I love that. Okay. So see how delicate that is? And you can then you can draw into it as well. I mean, it's um, not the end of anything, really. So I think that might do. And I'll put the, um, the materials list at the bottom of it. I might work into them a little bit further and then I can show you what else I can you can do with them. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed that and that's another way to use your alcohol inks. Have fun. <laughs>